Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will understand how to run correspondence analysis in SPSS. Correspondence analysis is a multivariate statistical technique used to analyze the relationship between the categorical variables in a contingency table. It is particularly useful for visualizing the data and identifying patterns or association between the rows and columns of the table. Correspondence analysis is similar to the principal component analysis but is designed for the categorical data rather than continuous data. Principal component analysis applies to the continuous data while correspondence analysis applies to the categorical data. Correspondence analysis summarizes a set of data into two dimensional graphical form. Real life applications. The first is market research. Analyzing the con consumer preferences, brand associations and purchase patterns based on the survey data. Biology and ecology. E ecology. Studying species distribution across the habitats or analyzing eco ecological factors influencing species diversity. Social science. Examining the relationship between the demographic variables like age, gender and income level in surveys or census data. Quality control. Analyzing the defect patterns across different production batches or locations to identify trends and patterns. Text mining. Analyzing word frequencies and co-occurrence in textual data for topic modeling and semantic analysis. Healthcare. Studying patterns of disease occurrence or treatment outcomes based on the patient characteristics and medical history. Linguistics. Analyzing language usage, usage patterns across different regions or time periods. Psychology. Exploring the relationship between the psychological variables such as personality traits and behavior patterns. Environmental studies. Studying factors affecting environmental pollution levels or biodiversity conservation strategies. Customer segmentation. Identifying distinct customer segments based on their preferences and behaviors for targeted marketing strategies. Correspondence analysis is done on the qualitative data. So let's understand this flowchart. We can divide the data into two parts, quantitative and qualitative. If we are having quantitative variables, we run principal component analysis. In qualitative also, how many variables are there? If there are two variables, we run correspondence analysis. And if there are more than two categorical variables, here we I am talking about the categorical variable. We go for multiple correspondence analysis, MCA. The correspondence analysis is carried out based on the concept of profile. A profile is a set of frequency divided by that total, that is the relative frequency. A profile reflects how changes in the category of one variable affects changes in the categories of the other variable. When we produce high dimensional data matrix into two or three dimensional space, better known as reducing the, reducing the dimensionality, the technique used is correspondence analysis. To understand the correspondence analysis, we will be using the inbuilt data frame SMOKE. The dataset is a fictional company having a staff groups of junior employees, senior employees, junior managers, senior managers and secretaries and their frequencies of smoking habit. So the smoking habit is none, light, medium and heavy. So you can see in this table, in this column, we are having the employees, the cadre of the employees and in the rows, the smoking, the smoking habit. So how many senior managers are having a heavy smoking? Two, medium, three, light, two, none, four. Now for junior manager, then senior executive, junior executive and secretaries. Now the first thing which we'll have to do is uh, we'll have to find out the active margin, which is row total and column total. So 11 is a row total, 18 row total, 51, 88, 25, then column total. 61, 45, 62, 25, and then the aggregate total of rows and columns. That is 193. Now we will calculate the column profiles. So how we do it? Four 
divided by 61, I'll get this figure. 4 divided by 61, I'll get this figure. 25 divided by 61, I'll get this figure. Similarly, 11 divided by 193, I'll get this figure. So that was a column profiles, row profiles. 4 divided by 11, I'll get this number. 2 divided by 11, I'll get this number. 3 divided by 11, 0.272. 2 divided by 11, 0 0.1818. Then 61 divided by 193 this is 0.31. 45 divided by 193 is 0.233. So this is a row profile. The row profiles are the cell contains divided by their corresponding row. That is the total column profiles are the cell contains divided by the corresponding column total 4 divided by 61. I already explained 4 by 11. 4 by 11 and 4 by 61. Column profiles are plotted in column oriented CA plot. Row profiles are plotted in a row oriented CA plot. Four dimensions will be required to plot this four columns. Correspondence analysis measures the difference between each individual row, row profile and the average row profile. Now we will take one example. So in the first column, we are having discipline. In second column, we are having the year. And in third column, we are having students. So in 1960, how many students opted for engineering branch? Then in 1965, how many students opted for mathematics? So we want to see the trend of the subjects. So from 1960, to 1975 we are having the data and there are various disciplines given here so first of all we will have to weigh the cases so go in data weigh cases transfer number of students into frequency variable click ok now we will go and analyze Dimension reduction, correspondence analysis, transfer year into row, define range. So, one, there are total eight years. Update, continue. If you want to see about the year, go in the variable view. Here, you can see there are total eight, one to eight. How many disciplines are there? Click here. So 12 disciplines are there. So transfer discipline into the column, define range, one, press update, continue. Now go in the plots, row plot, column plot, continue, and click OK. So we got the correspondence table, one, we got the summary and at the fag end we will be having the row and column points we will start the interpretation one by one so we'll, first we will start with the summary table this table is available here see summary table is here i will just copy it right click copy okay now let's see the interpretation Inertia divided by total inertia is is 0 0.016 divided by 0 0.023. It is 0 0.696, which is 69.6 uh, percentage. A very small correction. Very small. Here it is eight. Okay, I'll make this as eight. So it is 68.6 percentage. So here also I'll have to change it. Okay. The second dimension, it is 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.023. It gives me 0.188. That is 18.8 percent inertia. So cumulatively, we have 87.4 percentage inertia, which is quite good. So generally, we consider cumulative inertia of only two dimensions. Now the third dimension, 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.023. 
its inertia is very very less it's 10.5 percent so we don't consider so we only consider the dimension one and dimension two next thing which we have to see in this is the p value of the sky square what is our null hypothesis there is no association between rows and columns alternatively there is association between rows and columns what is desirable desirable is that p value should be less than 0 0.05 we reject null and there should be an association between rows and column so i will write as the p value of the chi square is less than 0 0.05 we reject null hypothesis which means that there is an association between rows and columns now we'll copy the another table which is overview column points this one okay let's do the interpretation of so we have to see in dimension one and dimension two if the numbers are near to each other if these two numbers are near sorry if these two numbers are near to each other then these disciplines will be near to each other 0 0.002 and 0 0.003 so engineering and maths are nearer to each other agriculture will be nearer to each other this table shows how much each discipline is contributing towards two dimension if figures are close to each other it means that two disciplines are related with each other for example mathematics is 0 0.002 and agriculture is 0 0.001 so on graph they will be nearer to each other but the value of the chemistry on second dimension here see the value of chemistry is 0.415 so it is not related with any of the subject so now we have got this chart that is based on row and column profile here the year is there 1965 1970 71 72 73 75 and th and 74 is here and these are the disciplines let's do the interpretation Engineering uh, discipline shows a steady increase from 794 in 1960 to 2959 in 1915 uh, in 1975. Now this is based on this correspondence table. Let me show you this table. This is based on this correspondence table. Here is it. See the engineering. Okay. There is a rise. So we are writing on the basis of this. Mathematics starts at 291 in 1960, peaks at 1281 uh, in 1972, and then slightly declines to 1149 in 1975, suggesting fluctuations but with general increase. Physics increases from 530 in 1960 to, uh, to 15 1973, with a variations in growth rate indicating the sustained interest but with fluctuations. So, which are the disciplines which were which are very popular from 1970, 71, 72, 73, 75, which are the engineering, mathematics, somewhat biology, and sociology. Chemistry was very far away from these years. Showing very patterns with a peak of 2, 2, 3, 4 in 1970, but then declines to 1762 in 1975, indicating initial interest followed by the stabilization or slight decline earth sciences here is earth sciences starts at 253 in 1960 peaks at 577 in 1973 showing a moderate increase over the years with some variability biology increases steadily from 1245 in 1960 to 3498 in 1975 indicating a significant rise in interest over the years agriculture so the gradual increase from 414 in 1960 to 904 in 1975 with steady growth indicating the sustained interest. Psychology starts at 772 in 1960, peaks at 2749 in 1975, showing a substantial increase over the years, possibility reflecting growing interest in social sciences. So thank you all of you. This was all about how to run correspondence analysis in SPSS. For more videos on advanced data analysis using SPSS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.